Hi, I'm Josh Walton, and I want to show you a couple of ways to keep your MIG torch running and humming and operating like it should. I can't tell you the number of times where I've had people come and be like, man, my, I'm just not getting the welds that I want, and uh, the machine's not working right, and you want to start with the simple stuff first. So this is like the most simplest and the most basic way to make sure that you're starting with a nice, clean base uh, when you're MIG welding. I So here's the... Here's the the MIG gun, I'm short arcing with it. And you can see how you get some, some crutches out there, some, uh, you know, spatter. And that's not ideal because what happens is there's a few things. So as that builds up on the inside, it affects the gas flow coming out. And as it collects on the tip, it'll start grabbing the wire as it comes out. So you'll start feeling a little catch. And that could be what that's from. Um, it doesn't even need to be that much spatter. It could be just like a little ball ended up on the end of this and it's dragging. That can have a big effect. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to clean it. Now there's these pliers from, uh, these are both from Channel Lock and these are their, uh, the basic wire cutters and then these are the welding pliers. So the Channel Lock 360s and the Channel Lock 337s. Um, so my, most of my career, I just use basically wire clippers and it's a, it's a really simple, simple way to use the blade to keep these clean. Um, I remember I was out in Arizona for work one time and I came across this dude named Grizz. He's a blacksmith in the OK Corral. And uh, he found out, we, we started talking about metal work and welding and uh, he was a old school blacksmith, but wasn't really up on, on welding that much. And his son had gotten him a little basic short arc Lincoln hobby welder from Home Depot. And he's like, man, I just cannot get this thing to run right. And I'm like, I'll take a look, look at it, man. First things first, the cup was entirely encased with spatter. So no gas was getting through. The wire was dragging the whole way out. So all he had was a pair of wire clippers. He had no new consumables because usually you'd start fresh. You'd get a new pallet. Yeah, basically the new parts in here that I'll show you in a minute. So all I did was take this apart. And when you're using a single, like a wire cutter like this, I just open it up like this. And then I use, set that down for a second. I'll use the blade to scrape the inside. And now, you know, you've got a, You've got a cleaner inside. Sometimes this cup's a little bit small, but uh, sometimes I'll take a wire wheel and I'll go in there and clean it out. But if you keep up on this, these will last you a long time. If you don't, they start breaking apart on the edges and you'll have to start replacing them. On this MIG gun, so you've got your, your collet body there and you can see the gas comes through these holes right here. So as this maybe builds up with crap or stuff gets built up around here you're blocking the gas flow so that's not ideal so you want to keep all this stuff clean so a lot of times when i take it apart i'll take a, a little wire brush and i'll wire wheel stuff off there um then you've got this clunk up here and this is all copper so the metal will stick to it eventually and then it'll start building up so you want to try to keep it keep it clean so i'll just take this and kind of clean the tip like that maybe take a wire brush like that and now you've got basically a fresh setup. And that's where you want to keep it at. You want to have, you're going to dial in the machine so you don't have to deal with much of that buildup. But I want you to see what happens when you get that crap around there, how to kind of clean it up. Now, where these pliers come in handy is you do a lot more with them. Um, while these are basic and you can get done what you need to get done, these are kind of more of a specialty tool. So if you're taking this apart, now this one, this, this, uh, this nozzle pops off. On some of the bigger ones, oh, let's see here. Like on this, this gun, it's a little bit bigger. So it screws on, but say it gets stuck or it gets hot, too hot. This has this little grasp thing right here. You can kinda just use that and crank it off. Now with this, you know, it's the same kind of setup, it's just a bigger gun. So with these pliers, they actually have like serrated edges on it. So you can kind of like just pick the stuff off and it's gonna, I don't have it uh, plugged in right now so I can't run the wire through it. You can kind of go like that if you got something really stuck on there. 
I guess that's just, that's just soot on this. And then with the nozzle to clean that out, on these, on these pliers, they have kind of a sharpened edge on the outside of these uh, sort of dolphin nose ends. You just kind of go like that. And you got it cleaned out. Now, you also have this little grip here. So if you've got a hard time, say you overheat it and this, this swells up, you can take this and use it to get it started coming off. And then clearly, you know, you've got the wire clippers there so you can clip the wire. This one has like a lot of, it even has a little hammer head. So if you've got a, sometimes, sometimes the torch will get a little miscombobulated and it's not gonna be quite centered. Just kind of take it and whack it like that, center it a little bit. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you guys. The, the importance of keeping these clean. One of the other differences is just kind of a quick aside. So one of these is set up for short arc and the other one's set up for pulse welding. For pulse welding, this is actually the, the, the tip, the contact tip is gonna be recessed from the edge of the cup. And that's to kind of protect it because pulse welding and spray welding is so hot. Whereas when you're doing short arc, the tip is actually above the nozzle. So it's more exposed, so there's more chance of, of spatter to get in there. So you really gotta make sure you keep it, keep it clean. Um, and then it also dep depends on what you're welding. Like if you're, if you're doing pulse aluminum, on the tip of this, it'll just start sort of frosting up with, with, uh, with aluminum. And you don't even need to scrape it off with a, with a wire clipper. You can just take a, take a wire brush and kind of scrape it off. So like pretty much when I was doing my certs for it, every, between every pass, I would, I would take it apart and clean it because otherwise it was really fickle and the aluminum was catching on the debris on the outside there. So really the, the thing I want to get across is it's important to keep this stuff clean. And if you do, that's just one less thing that you have to worry about. It may seem tedious at first, but you get used to it. You get into a groove, it becomes second nature and it makes everything a lot easier. Basically like anything else in welding, cleanliness is godliness. And so, you know, nothing a pair of pliers and a, and a wire brush can't handle. So that's pretty much it. Just kind of a quick and easy, nothing groundbreaking, but uh, it's, it's critically important to keep, to keep it done clean. Playing with fire. Fire, so I can retire. What else rhymes with fire? Gotta get my welding wire so I can play with fire. Need to get some string cheese from Meyer. Playing with my pliers. <laughs>